In today's video, I want to answer the following question. Bonjour Chris, you have changed your computer lately. Did you have to reload everything or is there an easy way to transfer Cubase to another computer? If so, maybe a little video on the topic could be a nice thing to have. Uh, yes, I did change my computer. Last fall, I went from a Windows-based computer to a MacBook Pro. Uh, I actually made a video on this one. If you want to watch it, I'm going to leave the link down below. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how I migrated my Cubase settings from my Windows-based computer to my new MacBook Pro. Hey, what's up, my friend? Chris Salim here from Mixdown Online. Okay, let's jump right in. I'm gonna show you how I transferred all of my Cubase settings from my old Windows-based computer to my new MacBook Pro. That can be done from a Windows machine to another Windows a computer or a Mac to a Mac or from one Cubase version to a newer Cubase version. It all works the same way. Now, from my old computer, what I needed to do to begin with is to go up to Edit, go down to Plugin Manager in Cubase, and save my current Cubase settings uh, by just creating myself a profile uh, within the profile manager. If you only have the default profile, that, that is fine, but you can click on new and create a new one with your current settings. Then I needed to export that profile on another drive so I can transfer that profile over to my new computer. And from my MacBook Pro, I installed a fresh version of Cubase. And then I went straight into the profile manager, click on import, and then import the file that I just exported from my older computer, which is a SRF file. So I import that over to the profile manager and that will import my profile straight into my new Cubase on the new computer. So we're talking about Cubase preferences, uh, key commands, uh, toolbar settings, um, plugin collections, and so on. And this is the easiest way to transfer over all of your Cubase settings to a new computer or to a new Cubase version. And very useful if, let's say, you're working in another studio that has Cubase and you just want to use your own key commands and preferences, you can just create yourself a profile, export that, bring that over to the new Cubase, load that up, and you'll be good to go, very easy. Now, the only thing it's gonna ask you to do when loading a new profile is to restart Cubase, that's it. Now, if for some reason some settings did not transfer correctly, you can go straight into the Cubase folder and pick and choose what you want to transfer over on the new computer, let me show you. So if you're on Mac, you will need to open a Finder window. And from the Finder window, you go on, go on top, click on your Alt key, that will uh, give you access to the uh, user library. Click on that one, go down to Preferences, and then look for your Cubase version. In my case, it's Cubase 12. And this is where I have all of my Cubase settings and you know everything related to Cubase is within that folder. So what I did is I made a copy of that folder from my Windows-based computer, just in case I needed to access some of the files within that folder and transfer them over to the new Cubase 12 folder on my Mac computer. So if you wanna access that folder and you're on a Windows-based PC, you need to go down to the bottom left, click on the Windows icon, uh, look for Steinberg Cubase 12 or your Cubase version, and you will see the user settings data folder. And this is where all of your settings from that Cubase version will be stored. From that point, you can go up one folder, go into the Steinberg folder, and then you will have your Cubase folder that you can copy over to another drive. So you have access to all those files if you need to manually copy them over to the new computer or the new Cubase version folder. For example, I have access to my project templates, uh, my presets, also my key commands is right here, even the file for my external plugin. So you can see that a bunch of settings are located within that folder, you know, user preferences, there you go. So that can be in case the profile manager didn't work perfectly, that can happen. But before I start to play within that folder, I always make a backup of the original folder before starting to replace files. It's always safer. But for the most part, I always start by using the profile manager 
and for the majority of the time, that will work perfectly. Now, when it comes to plugins and virtual instruments, there's no way around it. I needed to reinstall everything, which takes a long time, depending on how many plugins and virtual instruments you own. Now, the only thing that I always do, and it's a very good habit to take, is when I work with large sound libraries, like Native Instruments Complete. Those are amazing VSTIs, but they are linked to a huge sound library. Uh, now, we're talking about terabytes, okay? So, uh, while reinstalling all of my virtual instruments, if I have instruments that are linked to a large sound library, I always make sure to install those libraries on a different drive than my main OS drive. So this way I don't need to re-download the whole uh, sound library of that virtual instrument if I need to reinstall it. I just need to reinstall the plugins, the virtual instruments, and then link those virtual instruments to their own sound libraries that are located on a different drive. So for example, if I open the Steinberg Library Manager, uh, I have this uh, Verve virtual instrument. So this one has a eight gigabyte sound library attached to it. Uh, so if I click on details, I can see uh, that the samples are located on a different drive than my main OS drive. Okay, so the only thing I needed to do in this case was to reinstall the instrument without the sound library and just relink uh, the instrument with its own sound library that is on a different drive. And most virtual instruments out there that have large sound libraries are gonna allow you to do this. And this is something I highly recommend to do. Now, if you like these types of Cubase videos, feel free to watch the following one, my five Cubase little secrets. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave everything down below and don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to this channel. Until next time, take care and see you.